My name's Chris Sanderson. I'm Head of Procurement at NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. I should have been joined today by my counterpart from NHS Lanarkshire, Ewan Erskine, but he has uh, ducked out with a positive LFT test. <laughs> That's what he told me anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm also joined by Gillian Cameron from the Supplier Development Programme, who's also going to speak as part of this presentation. So I'll get underway. Uh, here we go. So I'm just going to just tell you today about an initiative that we're taking forward between Greater Glasgow and Clyde and also involving NHS Lanarkshire and the Supplier Development Programme uh, and what's driving this initiative. <coughs> so. What's driving it is, you know, we do have a desire to look beyond traditional, what might be regarded as traditional procurement metrics um, into those wider societal benefits that we heard the, you know, the minister talking about at the, op the start of this conference. And increasingly, uh, I know from my own point of view, we're, we're having more conversations in the health boards with our public health and health improvement colleagues about trying to join the dots between that agenda and what we're doing in, in, in procurement. Also, there is legislative drivers, like I've, I've put there, you know, we've got the, we all, if you're all into procurement your, uh, yourself, you'll know about the Procurement Reform Scotland Act, and you'll know about the general duties that we have around uh, sustainability, um, supporting businesses, and specific duties around community benefits. <coughs> And we also have sort of local strategy drivers. So, you know, again, if you're uh, involved in public sector procurement, you'll know that under the Procurement Reform Act, we have to have published procurement strategies. And increasingly in our, in our strategies, uh, we're wanting to start getting into and touch on uh, local spend and how can we stimulate and involve more our SMEs. Um, we do have, you know, we do have uh, spend data uh, and we do analyse that data. We know who we spend our money with. We know we know who we know who that is from things like Spikes Cavell or uh, and things. But we don't really know much. Certainly, I don't know much about our actual SME base that's within the local authority areas that our health board footprint covers. And just you know, from a procurement strategy point of view, locally, you know, we've built this into our objectives over the next three years. And to be honest with you, the other thing that's driving it is, is because, well, because, because we can, or because I can, because I've been coming to conferences like this for a few years, and Procurex, and you go and you see the supported businesses stand, and you think, you know, I'm in a position as a head of procurement with a, a large <laughs> health board where I can do something about this, and I sort of feel that, you know, it's incumbent on me to sort of try and take this agenda forward. So there's a number of things that are driving this that hope sort of makes sense and chime with, with, with those that are here today. Let me take it my next page. So, background to what's going on. So, the procurement department at both health boards, so Greater Glasgow and Clyde and Lanarkshire, um, as I said, we're increasingly making links with our public health and our health improvement teams uh, around the role of procurement uh, within that whole community wealth building agenda. Uh, in Greater Glasgow and Clyde, where I am, we had the opportunity through the Health Anchors Learning Network, HALN, to bid for health foundation, uh, a Health Foundation grant uh, to take this initiative forward, which was successful. We got some money through the Health Foundation. Uh, and in that bid, uh, it involved, uh, you know, with, with uh, obviously discussions that happened beforehand, um, the, the possibility of us commissioning the Supplier Development Programme uh, to take forward uh, this, this initiative and this work. Uh, and we were obviously successful with that bid and that's led to us formally commissioning the Supplier Development Programme to work with us. And NHS Lanarkshire, um, they've taken forward that work as well, not, not through a, a grant funding application, but just with some local uh, money that they had available, local funding, and they've also commissioned the Supplier Development Programme along with ourselves. And why that's important is, is that together, Greater Glasgow and Clyde and Lanarkshire Health Boards, uh, we cover the eight local authority areas uh, in the Glasgow City Region deal, which is the sort of economic strategy area, and together we, we cover almost 40% of health board uh, revenue budgets within within Scotland. Uh, so we're, we're together we're, we, we form quite a big block of, of uh, public sector or NHS spend. 
this is a, I won't dwell on this slide, but it's just um, it's just a breakdown basically of the Great Glasgow and Clyde spends about 650 million with uh, third party suppliers, and that's a breakdown by uh, it's a sort of modified version of Spikes, Chris's version of Spikes, and it's just breaking down that spend. And the point that I'm just making here, if you familiar with the category ABC spend, you know, A being the sort of pan-public sector contracts, B being the sectoral specific, in our case, national procurement contracts, and C being the local spend. Um, the point I was making here is that about 50% of our typical health board spend is covered by category A, A category B contracts. We are national organisations, but the other 50% will be category C. Uh, and sometimes it's a mixture of category B and C, depending on the, the, the commodity area. So although there is a large degree of national contract coverage, there still is uh, quite a large amount of local, uh, locally tendered category C spend, and so that does present an opportunity to sort of further this agenda. Had my colleague Ewan been here today, Ewan Erskine from Lanarkshire, he would have probably talked to you through the, the Lanarkshire um, similar breakdown, but it's very similar very similar in that sort of 50% category C and it's in the same typical category so we know that uh, you know pharmaceuticals, medical devices and clinical consumables, medical equipment is tends to be covered by or will be covered by national procurement frameworks in the main but like I say there are pockets of category C spend so it tends to be you know sort of estates and facilities, uh, that sort of area and, and others training, marketing and media and so on that we do have a lot of uh, local, or sorry, it's local contracts. And just, that's the stats. So from, from using Spikes Cabell, which, which is not, I know that there are some flaws with that data, but we've identified that using the Scottish Procurement Information Hub, aka Spikes, um, it is able to identify where the supplier headquarters are based. So that's the caveat. So it acknowledge that that doesn't take account of maybe big suppliers who are perhaps have an HQ in one part of the country, but they might have still have a significant presence uh, in, our, in our areas. But you're talking um, at Greater Glasgow and Clyde, um, about £77 million pounds worth of spend with suppliers that are HQ'd in the six local authority areas. And at NHS Lanarkshire, the two local authority areas there, it's 10% it's of the trade spend. Now that's, although that seems quite a low number, it's not perhaps unexpected in the sense that given the profile of what health boards are buying, when I showed you that breakdown, about a third of the trade spend would be uh, secondary care drugs, home oxygen contracts, huge spend there. And then we've obviously, given what we do, a lot of spend in medical devices and clinical consumables and medical equipment. So it's perhaps not surprising that the numbers are that low, but that is the, the numbers that we've been able to derive from the, the spikes data. Moving on, um, just wanted to talk about competing tensions because I just want to be quite upfront about this. Um, on the one hand, uh, the NHS Scotland sort of procurement strategy over the last 15 years, and, and this is not a criticism, but the, 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 the strategy has been around uh, national procurement contract coverage, increasing that coverage, aggregation of spend across, the, across Scotland to drive cost reduction. And we do have sort of centralised hospital logistics cent centred around a national distribution centre or nat national distribution service as it is these days. And as I say, that has been an extremely successful uh, agenda in terms of driving down costs and um, value to the public purse. But it does, you know, does result in, you know, obviously uh, bigger suppliers being more successful in that area. The other competing tension, and we've just got to be quite open about this, is that we all know that we are su we're all subject, procurements over 50,000 are governed by external procurement regulations, be that the Procurement Reform Act or the Public Contract Scotland regulations, which obviously means open, transparent and non-discriminatory competition. And we can't just, we can't just directly award uh, contracts to, just because it's a local business. And, but on the other hand, on the other side of that tug of war we have, we do have this desire to encourage SMEs, supported business, and there obviously is a lot of government policy ambitions around this area where they see procurement as a sort of lever around those, those government policy ambitions of, of more local spend. And there is, there is within health boards, you know, increasingly a sort of localism agenda around you know, public health and health improvement. So, 
The plan for 22-23 is that Greater Glasgow and Clyde and Lanarkshire Health Boards over the next 12 months, we're going to work with the Supplier Development Programme and their ability to reach out into that SME base. And we're going to hold a series of supplier engagement sessions to learn more about our SMEs. And it's also for us to understand if there are, are there any barriers in terms of what we do around local contracting activity that we can that we can change what we do? Is there something simple that we can tweak that would actually make it easier for uh, SMEs to potentially win public public contracts? And on that note, Gillian Cameron from the Supplier Development Programme is going to just explain further uh, what the what the programme entails. Thank you, Chris. OK, so I, I don't know if many of you in the room already know who we are and what we do, but we are the Supplier Development Programme. We're the Scottish Government Local Authority initiative that set out to provide a bespoke uh, support service to help Scottish SMEs, third sector and social enterprises how to tender. Very much we work within the power of procurement. We work together to contribute to the power of procurement and sustainable procurement duty. Um, and very much our work is very um, hands-on, demonstrating and connecting suppliers into actual opportunities that are out there. We link key tender opportunities to dedicated events and align training opportunities and we try to involve SMEs pre and post tender um, to find out about the opportunities that are out there and how they can identify future contract opportunities as well. So we work with all 32 local authorities at the moment and we've now started to look at other contract opportunities such as the um, government agencies. It's a Team Scotland approach and we're absolutely delighted to now expand who we're working with to the NHS and working with Chris at NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde and also NHS Lanarkshire. Everything we do is about sustainability and about how we can help suppliers connect with the buying organisations. And typically what we found our work in local authority is that they have an economic development function which can help connect businesses into the procurement opportunities. However, other government agencies and the NHS don't as such have that economic development function. An SDP as a shared service can help connect that back in um, and working with the eight local authorities that are part of the city region, if you like, and the NHSs, we hope to connect the opportunities and grow the businesses that have those opportunities. So how do we do that? One of the key things that we believe in is about early intervention. Um, about providing routes for suppliers to find out about the opportunities earlier on in the process. So again, how do we make sure that we have the wave plans available, that we have the contract opportunities that are available for suppliers to understand what's coming up so they can engage early. And we want to improve the tender readiness of suppliers so by understanding what's in the marketplace they can start to build their business. We also want to ensure that we're connecting buyers with suppliers. How do buyers know what suppliers are out there in the marketplace? And particularly since COVID, businesses have changed. Some have gone out of business, some have diversified. So how do you ensure the latest businesses connect with buyers? We like to integrate ourselves into projects. Um, we've done a lot of work with the city region city deals and um, highlighting opportunities that are coming out of them, not only on a direct public procurement route, but also through the supply chain and we want to promote the opportunity out there for suppliers. At the heart of what we're doing, and many of you have probably heard the word community wealth building, and this is where we really want to ensure that government organisations, businesses and the community are all stakeholders in creating a diverse supply chain. SDP has been actively involved in helping contribute to procurement strategies, community wealth building, um, action plans and other key documents. And we try to encourage the use of SDP in those plans as much as possible and use us from the outset to help and connect with the supply base. Raising early awareness is absolutely tantamount important on this um, because if a supplier can understand what's coming up and coming down the line, then they can be tender ready for that. So what do we actually do for suppliers? Well, in the first part we provide an independent free resource for tender support. We offer a full range of training tender courses, everything from what is the public sector, how do I get involved, to using the likes of Public Contracts Scotland, um, look at your bids, look at framework contracts, understanding what community benefits are and asking about what the ask is in the tender. 
We have a whole range of online services with contacts of councils and the procurement organisations and that will include the NHS. We run Meet the Buyer type events which is similar to today but on a wider public sector basis and we run procurement workshops and talking tenders webinars. And we've got a talking tenders with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde coming up in May which you can access through our website. We really recently launched our e-learning modules, so giving suppliers access 24-7 to bite-sized access of training um, on topics such as quick quotes, uh, how to use Public Contract Scotland and looking at the tender process. Through my core team we have a help desk where suppliers can reach out to us and uh, raise questions with us. We don't deal with particular procurement questions, if it's about a tender opportunity we would refer that back to the buyer, but any general questions they can come to us and we can offer them some advice or support or indeed signpost them to where they might find out more. Through our monthly newsletter and our social media we connect out to the audiences so they're aware of the opportunities that are coming up, the new projects we're working on and the tenders we might be supporting. And we also have and have developed uh, a corporate membership for larger tier one type contractors, which is really important when the spend starts to go into the supply chain, how do small businesses then connect with that opportunity? How do they then find out what opportunities are coming up there? And more and more we're seeing the larger contractors looking to work with us so we can help do that and open up their supply chains. So are we any good? It's all, is there any point in running all this tender training if we're not any good? Um, I'm delighted to say that 93% of Scottish SMEs said they were more likely to bid for a public sector contract after our 10 year training in 2021. And I've got some examples up here of some of the feedback that we've had. Um, and we think it's important not just to work with the Scottish public sector, but also to work with the likes of Crown Commercial Services, with the Ministry of Defence and other organisations with opportunities for small business in Scotland to grow. So what we're going to do for the NHS? Well, first of all, we're going to help support the diverse identification of a diverse range of suppliers. There's thousands of businesses out there, so how do we go about ensuring that we connect with them and they understand the opportunity there is to work with the NHS? So we're going to do that by working with our local authority members, a range of business support services and reaching out to the marketplace to inform them of this project and to engage with some of the partner organisations and stakeholders who network with the different diverse organisations that are out there to inform them about this project and say we want to reach out and connect with your audiences as well. We're going to host webinars and workshops to connect and train a range of new and diverse suppliers and we're working with Chris to look at some of the opportunities he might have coming up in his pipeline where we can actually deliver some aligned tender training. This is a model we find highly successful where we'll be working with the local authorities and indeed with Scottish Government where you actually have the carrot in front of the supplier so there is an actual contract opportunity and from that suppliers can then come along, find out about the opportunity, ask their questions and then receive some dedicated training and that could be on any aspect, it could be on how to use Public Contract Scotland, how to find the project on PCS Tender, it could be looking at particular questions or it could be talking about how the tender has maybe been run before and what a good answer looks like and what maybe a not so good answer looks like so they can ensure that they're bidding better. We'll also look at the procurement community wealth building strategies and other documents. Um, I'm delighted to say as part of this project, Chris and his team have been really engaging and one of the things we want to look at is there anything in their documentation or any of their processes that might be a barrier to procurement to suppliers bidding. Um, so this is a journey for both audiences, for both buyers and suppliers to look at the processes and understand if there's maybe little things we can tweak or maybe there's some things that are being done really well and it's just the suppliers don't know about the projects and the tenders and we can raise awareness to them on that. We also want to look at how we might um, consider working with larger contractors as well. Is there opportunities within the supply chain the NHS to encourage them to work with more local businesses? SCP is very strong in social media and um, hopefully you can all follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and we find that has been a really important channel especially in lockdown where obviously we haven't been able to get out to events such as these or to network with various supplier organisations so social media plays a huge role in this and that's something we want to make sure we continue to do. So what else can be done from the buyer side? Well heads up build early awareness. I think that's one of the most important things that a buyer can do is to make sure the market is aware of what's coming. 
Um, we strongly believe that pre-market engagement is really important and sometimes that can help shape the commission, can help shape the tenders um, and engaging with the marketplace to understand what can maybe work better or to have their input can really help shape that. And that can be done by having those procurement opportunities where there is pre-market engagement, um, assessing how that might work. And we do that through a range of communication methods, talk very much about social media and how we connect on that. I think too, another area that we've developed um, working with Glasgow City Region City Deal is looking at frameworks. As Chris said earlier, a lot of spend goes through frameworks, but our supplier is aware of which frameworks are being used. The NHS obviously have their own frameworks, but there may be other occasions where you call off from, say, Scotland Excel or from uh, Crown Commercial Services. So our suppliers are aware that that's the procurement route and that's how they can get involved. Maybe they want to find themselves on those frameworks and bid for them, or indeed contact one of the suppliers that's on that and understand if there's an opportunity for them in the supply chain. So what we're looking for with regard to outcomes. Um, it's very important that we raise the visibility of the contract opportunities and through monitoring our social media hopefully we can understand and also when we run our events we'll measure who attends, who comes along to that and then follow through the, the procurement process to understand that more suppliers are actually bidding for those opportunities and hopefully seeing the success rate of some of those winning. I think robust data is really important in all this and that's going to be a big part of this project is to be able to evidence the outcomes of what we've done to help deliver that and hopefully increase the pool of suppliers that Chris and his team will have access to to be able to invite to quick quotes and to invite to tender. And we really want to look at how we increase uh, the local businesses' share of collaborative spend. I think there's probably a, a misconception from spy base that sometimes um, NHS only buys pharmaceutical um, or medical equipment, but obviously they have local spend, as Chris highlighted in the slides earlier, where there are opportunities for local businesses to get involved. So here are some of the engagement events that we've already got lined up. Um, on the 6th of May, we have a Diversifying the NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde NHS Partner event. And this is the, org this is the event where we're looking for those organisations, the, the network leaders, um, so the women-owned businesses and the BAME businesses, to come along and find out more about how they can work with us on this project and what we're planning to do and to connect out to their audiences. We then have a talking tenders with uh, Greater Glasgow and Clyde on the 26th of May. So this is an opportunity to ha join the webinar, hear Chris's plans and talk about what opportunities got coming up, how to do business with them, and uh, we'll talk a wee bit about our support around that. And on the 15th of June, we also have our national Meet the Buyer event, which is going to be a virtual event, and at that, we'll also be running a talking tenders with the NHS Lanarkshire. Um, again, you can hear what NHS Lanarkshire are planning to do and find out about the opportunities there. We also have a course running on the 24th of May about using Public Contracts Scotland. This is Spire Development Programme's most uh, popular course. Um, Public Contracts Scotland holds a wealth of information and sometimes suppliers just need a little bit of a helping hand to understand how they can get the most from that portal and to use it to their best benefit. And we will, as this project develops on, schedule more line tender training um, with the up and coming opportunities that are coming along with that. So that's it for me today, but Chris and I are quite happy to take any questions if anyone's got any questions about the project and what we're trying to do or wish to come up and talk to us afterwards. <laughs> Sorry, Sad. Oh, there we go. Can we take up the, um, the mic? Yep. <laughs> Hang on, I think Scott's just switching on. Yeah? I'm afraid you're going to have to show. So the, 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 que the question was about um, supply of uh, nurse agency staff, is that right? 
So, um, I, presumably, are you on the um, colleagues here at National Q, are you on the NP510 agency framework? No. So those other boards are using you as an off-contract agency. I mean, that does happen from time to time, so I think maybe it's a case of having a chat with Larkshire and Glasgow offline, because there is a process where boards can use an off-contract if they exhaust the national framework, and they just want to make sure that they've been suitably pre-qualified to the same standard as the ones on the framework. So it's maybe a case of just sharing details after this, and that you can maybe put you in touch with the the particular teams, it's usually the teams that run the nurse bank that would do the nurses. You've tried, right, okay, so let's let's see if we can maybe break down a few of those barriers after this. Okay, right. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, there we go. You have to show it, we're It's got to be answered. What does the 10DR stand for? Yeah, what does the 10DR stand for? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you say it out loud and say it slowly, oh. and then say oh. it again. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, though. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no one else. Okay. You will just close off. If that's, well, if that's it, thanks very much for uh, paying attention and, and, and taking part today. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, the project is a success. And maybe this time next year we'll come back and tell you how it all went. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. Thank you. <laughs>